Here we go! Hey guys, and welcome back to Lost Bits, right here on Tetra Bay Gaming, the series where we explore the unused, scrapped, and unseen content in gaming. This Nintendo DS staple is one of my favorites in the series, and even now I find myself revisiting it every once in a while. Now I covered some pre-release builds of this game in a previous video, so be sure to check that one out before or after this one as I'll be referencing it a lot, but in this video we'll be specifically taking a look at the final release of the game. Mario Kart DS has a bunch of cool cut content from graphics to missions and even some unused courses, so strap in, it's gonna be a good one. Before we start, graph, less than 30%, blah blah blah. Basically, if you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and leaving a like below, it really helps me out a lot. Thanks. Anyways, with all of that said, go bust out your DS's, it's time to find some more Mario Kart DS Lost Bits. So, to kick things off, first is a pretty strange thing left in the game's memory that we haven't seen here on Lost Bits since I think the Deltarune video. Found in certain parts of the game's memory are repeated drops of this ASCII artwork of 8-Bit Mario from Super Mario Bros. Now I'm not certain it serves any purpose other than looking cool, but either way it's a cool little secret that I'm sure many never got to see. Next up, since there's only one track, let's take a look at the unused audio in Mario Kart DS. This lone unused track just carries the name SSEQ underscore triple zero five. It sounds kinda similar to the Wi-Fi menu theme, so it's possible it might have also been meant for online play in some way, or since it's found one track away from the record screen music, it's believed to maybe have been related to that as well. Either way, here's a quick sample of this track, it's quite a relaxing bop. Now moving on to what's going to be the bulk of this video since there's so many of them, next let's talk unused and hidden graphics. First up, as far as characters go, left over in the game is an early version of the Daisy model. Not all too much is different here, but notable changes can be seen in her hair, face, and arms. Like come on, those are some big meat hooks. Also a bit of pink was seemingly added to her crown. Not sure if it was intentional or not, cause to me it kinda looks out of place. Then, the only other playable character that has an alternate early version left in the game is Shy Guy, once again with this really, really basic model. Like, we're talking zero extremities here. We saw this also left over back in one of the pre-release demos, so it's strange to see him back here. This was very likely used in early development as a placeholder of sorts, so yeah, again, kinda weird why this wasn't removed. Well, maybe not that weird here at all, since there are a bunch of other early graphics that also remain left over and unused. The first of these are carts. Many, many early carts are left over here, the first of which are the standard carts for Mario, Peach, Yoshi, Toad, DK, Wario, and Bowser. Oddly enough, it doesn't seem that Luigi's cart made the cut. Anyways, these early versions all use an early texture for the emblem on the front featuring numbers 1 through 8, and not only that, but the texture mapping is also slightly different here with the early models as there's not really a backrest for the cart seat as the engine block front here just appears similar to how it does on the sides. These early carts were seen in old pre-release screenshots and trailers, and honestly I like most of these early emblem designs, so I think it's too bad they were just completely removed, but I guess whoever wants to use them can always just remake them in the game's emblem editor. Next there are a few more early versions of carts that remain left over. Just like we saw in the pre-release builds, the final version 2 contains early versions of the Light Tripper, 4 Wheel Cradle with smaller front tires, a pink Yoshi Egg 1, Bowser's Tyrant with its tiny little claws at the front, as well as the early version of Wario's Brute, which looks as menacing as it does goofy. Pretty weird. Now those were the same that we saw in the pre-release builds, but there are also a few new unused early cart alternates that are also found in the final build. The first of these are alternate colors of the standard cart for both Dry Bones and Rob. For Dry Bones, the cart was once planned to have a sort of charcoal grey color rather than the sandy color seen in the final. Then for Rob, his cart used to be white before it was changed to black in the final. It's thought that perhaps his cart was initially going to be white to better match Rob's Japanese color scheme as seen in the color changes for Rob's other carts between different regions. 
And speaking of Rob, the ROB LGS also has an early unused version kicking around in the files. The obvious difference here are the wheels and tires. Not only are the colors different, but in the final version we see the addition of the giant wheel in the back as opposed to having four small ones. Not exactly sure why this change was made, but perhaps having three wheels like this just makes it seem more stable. And it seems the developers were all about removing tires, as the zipper bike design was also changed in a similar way. The early version rocked four wheels, and the front two here were replaced with a single one. I think this change makes a lot of sense, honestly. Then lastly, the wildlife cart also saw a few changes from another early version that's left over. Here we see smaller stuff, like some changes to the front bumper, the headlights were made a bit bigger, this grey thing on the side was removed, as were the side mirrors? I mean, DK doesn't even use his turn signal, so not surprised he doesn't need his mirrors either. Now before moving on, quick side notes, while checking out some of these different models in the game's files, I discovered that you can swap textures around for the different models, and this led me down a dark, deep rabbit hole. What the f***? Oh no. Mmm, no thanks. What the f***? It's Peach Car! Alright, moving on with more unused objects, there's once again a few I already mentioned in the pre-release video, so I won't spend too much time on them here. All left over, we got the early Fireball, early Shine Sprite and Goomba animations, this test Brock, the old bumper and flippers for Waluigi Stadium are still here, as is the early yellow car. Car happy, car mad. Honestly, the only unused model that wasn't also seen unused in the pre-release demos is this here tree, labeled as Mario Tree. And this is a render of the same type of tree that's seen throughout Mario Kart Double Dash. Now in my pre-release video covering this game, I went into detail about several things that were left in those builds that suggested that the development took several pointers from Double Dash, and I guess this was another remnant of that. There's a bit more to the story, but we'll come back to that later. Now moving on to the 2D side of the graphics, we got quite a few things that go unused. All unused, we got early emblems for the red and blue teams that were meant to be used in team-based modes, an early version of the question mark that's seen inside the item boxes, text left over from a pre-release demo telling the player to press the A button in English, German, Spanish, French, and Italian, as well as this font set that's thought to have been used during development of the game. I don't know if it's the exact same, I don't believe it is, but to me it seems pretty similar to the font used in Super Mario Bros. 3. Then next are a few placeholder graphics, always love seeing these. We got this placeholder graphic for the cup icons, this placeholder emblem graphic once used for the emblem seen on the friend's record screen, and finally this pair of differently sized and colored placeholder graphics for the player icon seen in the battle results screen. Now I briefly mentioned the old placeholder emblems earlier when talking about the leftover early cart designs, but here is a collection of all of them that go unused here. We got the several numbers, this blue smear thing, Mario's head, as well as this star. Once again, the number 2, as seen in pre-release screenshots on Luigi's cart, is for some reason not present here, and instead, Luigi's cart defaults to the star emblem. Also, a bit of an oddity here are these two emblems. Both appear to be 05, but the 0 in this one kinda has some extremities, making it look like a P or an A. Both of these are associated with Toad, and I guess they were just iterating the design here. It's kind of weird. Next, we got this unused graphic of what looks to be an early game selection screen with two blank windows that oddly kinda do look like some old Windows XP windows. Now, some speculate that this might have been used for multiplayer modes, but based on the name Select Game M Single, it's also likely this was just for single player stuff. Although unfortunately, Shy Guy was banished from this game only to be playable by those playing the game's multiplayer modes via single card download play, there is actually a leftover character selection icon for him left in the game. This suggests that at one point in development, Shy Guy might have actually been a regular selectable character. I don't know who thought it was a cool or fun idea to make Shy Guy locked to single card multiplayer, but my man was done pretty dirty in this game. Almost as finessed as Waluigi was for not being included in Mario Kart 7 over other community favorites like Wiggler and Queen Bee. Anyways, I'm getting worked up, so I digress. This unused Shy Guy graphic can actually still be loaded into the game by setting a record in the Time Trials or Grand Prix mode with this action replay code, which will force you to play as Shy Guy. 
pretty cool, but yeah, still wish Shy Guy wasn't shafted. Anyways, last up for the unused graphics, we got some for an early emblem editor. We got a background gradient, a layout, as well as many user interface graphics. Now I mentioned the old emblem editor seen in the kiosk demo in the pre-release video, but this one is actually a little bit different from both that one as well as the final one. It's sort of in between. And although it can't be loaded into the game or anything, here is a mock-up of what it was likely to look like when put together. We see some similarities to the old style, like the color palette thing at the top left, and also some differences from the final, like only having a long start button on the bottom instead of a start and select button. And also, before moving on, although the graphic itself isn't unused, there's an off-screen paratroopa that can be seen on the minimap of the Baby Park track. It's nice attention to detail, but it's kinda odd that this point of interest was added to the minimap, and not any of the others here. It makes me wonder if this had some sort of extra significance to the stage at one point in development. Next up, Mario Kart DS has leftover configurations for quite a few missions, 28 to be exact. Now unfortunately, these can't be loaded into like some could in the kiosk demo. Most of these just seem like run-of-the-mill missions, and some appear to just be early versions of missions that did go on to be used. On the flip side, there are some that stand out, like giving Luigi 5 whole minutes to collect a single coin? Either this was just a test for coin collecting missions, or that coin was really well hidden. Mario Kart DS has quite a few missions as it is, and none of these really sound all too crazy to me, so I don't think there's that much here that was scrapped to write home about. Back in one of my Mario Kart Double Dash Lost Bits videos, I mentioned a hidden code that could be accessed by inputting a certain button combination after a race. Well, something similar actually happens in Mario Kart DS. By pressing up, down, R, L, Y, and A in the Time Trials record screen, a 16 character code will pop up. Now this is apparently a code containing information about your ghost data for a given track. For Mario Kart Double Dash, the code was used as part of a Club Nintendo contest in Japan in 2004, so it's speculated that this code in Mario Kart DS was likely used, or at least intended to be used, in a similar manner. Simon Time has also made a site that can decode these codes back into in-game information. It's pretty cool. Wait, what? If you want to test it out yourself, I'll hopefully remember to have it linked for you down in the description below. And now finally, time for my favorite part. I teased this in the pre-release video, but now it's time to check out the many unused racetracks found left over in Mario Kart DS. We got everything from cut tracks to test maps, so buckle up. Also, since I didn't go over some of the removed racetracks in the pre-release demos of the game, since I thought they all showed up in the final, but this isn't actually the case, so we'll quickly go over some of those that were seen in previous builds, but completely removed from the final. First up is Donkey Course, and this is a very early version of what would eventually become DK Pass. Overall, the layout is pretty similar, with some slight changes here and there, but I definitely feel like I'm playing on DK Pass. Also, as you can see, it isn't a snow map at all yet, and instead features what looks like early grass, and here the giant snowballs are instead giant rocks. I don't think this necessarily means this wasn't planned to be a snow-themed track, but it's pretty cool to experience it in a snow-less manner. Then, the second track, if you want to call it that, that was removed from the final is called MR Stage 1, with MR standing for Mission Run. This small area is apparently an early version of the Big Bully Boss fight area. There's not much here other than some item blocks. Other racers can be spawned in too, but since it's intended to be a boss battle area and not a race, they kinda just hang out. But now with those out of the way, now onto the tracks that also go unused in the final release. Now a few of these I wasn't able to load in myself, or if I did, they just came out textureless. Not super fun to play on, let me tell ya, it kinda reminded me of my Mario 64 challenge video. Anyways, thankfully though to the awesome Mario Kart DS modding community, these tracks have been restored and made playable. So extra shoutouts to all those like David Evgen, Pablo MK7, and the many more that made this possible. So first, let's get the least interesting one out of the way, and this one is called Wario Course. This one has a slightly different layout, slightly different texturing, and doesn't contain any objects other than a few item boxes near the start. Other than that though, nothing too crazy here. Next up is MR Stage 4, with again, MR standing for Mission Run, and this is an early version of the Wiggler Race. Now here we start to see some notable changes compared to the one that's used in the final. The cars and Wiggler don't produce sound, here the boss theme is used instead of the normal music, 
the early models for the yellow car are seen here, and most notably, Mario doesn't have any balloons, and Wiggler just, yeah, doesn't move, making it basically impossible to fail this mission. That's okay, Wiggler. You go when you feel like it. Moving along, we got two Mario Kart Double Dash courses that were ported over to this game, but ultimately scrapped. First is Mini Block Course, which was also seen unused in the kiosk demo, and this is a remake of the Block City battle track from Double Dash. Not my favorite battle map ever, but I still wish it was left in. Then we got Old Mario GC, and this is a DS remake of Double Dash's Mario Circuit. Now this is where the Double Dash tree model I mentioned earlier was once planned to appear in. Unfortunately, although still accessible, this course was never really completed as many parts of it appear unfinished. The collision is scuffed in some parts, there aren't any objects besides a few item boxes at the start, and Peach's Castle lacks many finer details. It's unclear if this track was ever actually planned to be included in the game, or if it was just ported in early in development, much like the many other things like the early character and card selection screens were from Double Dash. Next up is the most epic and intricate Mario Kart track e Yeah, okay, it's just a circle. Test Circle is exactly as described, and is the smallest Mario Kart track ever, even putting Baby Park to shame. There's only one item box, but it doesn't even matter because there's only one lap here, making the race last like, I kid you not, 5 or 6 seconds. I assume this must have been used in early development for testing purposes. Now moving along, we got Noko Noko Course. Noko Noko being the Japanese name for Koopa Troopa, it's no surprise that this is a sort of Koopa Beach style track. And here we actually get to see more objects this time, with more item boxes as well as a single Goomba that's kinda glitchy. Fun. Now next up is Luigi Course, and this one's pretty interesting. This is actually a super early version of Waluigi Pinball. I went over another early version of Waluigi Pinball in the pre-release video, which also is left over here in the final, but even that one was way more complete than this one. Although the layout is generally similar with a giant upwards climb at the start and several bumpers and flippers on the way down, this very early version definitely has a more cheese aesthetic than it does pinball. It's pretty similar, but yeah, nowhere close to being as good as the real thing. What is really fascinating to me about the stage is that it has an alternate path at the end that was removed from the later versions of this track. Basically, you would go over this spinning thing and it would take you to a section below the stage. However, it honestly feels like a detriment during a race, as it seems like this detour takes way longer to reach the end of the lap compared to just going down the end of the section. And I'm sure this had something to do with the decision to scrap this detour. Regardless though, this is quite a big change from the final. Also, just based on the name Luigi Course, it's entirely possible that this course might have been intended to be a Luigi-themed course rather than a Waluigi one. Overall, not a bad early unused map. She's out of 10. Now, last up for this video are two unused test maps. The first of these is called Dokkan Course. This track is all about testing pipes, I guess, as it has you going through not one, not two, but three styles of pipes. Red checkered, green checkered, and a caged one. I assume this test map was all about testing curved terrain as it's seen pretty much everywhere, especially with these pipes. One thing about this course though is you have to be pretty careful. Falling off the stage anywhere will cause the game to crash, so definitely don't want to be falling off the edges where there aren't any bumpers. All in all, a pretty cool course. And last up is an unused test stage properly named Test 1 Course. Now this one is much like the many test rooms that we've seen here on Lost Bits that I've grown to love. Featuring a similar look to those we saw in Mario Sunshine and Pikmin, this stage tests several things like corkscrewing paths, some loop-de-loops, looping onto a platform, more pipes like we saw in the Dokkan stage, a large crater thing, ramps at various angles, and more. Honestly, it just feels like a giant skate park of sorts, or a large Hot Wheels play area. Now I know I'm biased, and I basically say this about every test room we see here on the show, but it was a lot of fun to play around in. And it doesn't stop here either. Now I don't think I fully understand this quite yet, but there's more to this track too. Now what you've been seeing is what's believed to be how this stage was intended to be used during testing, but apparently this track is normally overlapped with an early version of Rainbow Road, and it also has some more objects that aren't believed to have been there when the map was used for testing. 
Thankfully, this early version of Rainbow Road also has been restored separately. Overall, the course isn't anything special. Exactly what you'd expect from an early Rainbow Road. Some scuffed geometry, giant item boxes, and lots of places to fall off. And yeah, the other objects I mentioned are what appear to be tests for the bridge from Delfino Square, a gear segment from TikTok Clock, as well as the otherwise unused test Brock model I mentioned earlier, which itself is actually a placeholder version of the moving block platform seen in the Bowser's Castle track. Yeah, so as far as I understand it, the early Rainbow Road track, these objects, and the actual test map were all like rolled into one in the final release. It's pretty odd. Either way though, all of these things are super cool to see, and it's awesome how the Mario Kart DS community has not only restored them, but made them playable as well. For those interested, I'll leave a link to David Evgen's video, which has a patch that you can download if you want to check out these unused tracks for yourself. Anyways, that about wraps up the Mario Kart DS Lost Bits saga, and I hope you enjoyed. As always, thank you all so much for tuning in, and I will see you in a bit.